Coach Sullivan here again with MGS Coaching Football. I'd like to thank my subscribers and those who haven't yet. I really hope you do. And this past year, I completed my 38th year coaching football where I was a defensive coordinator, but over that time, I've been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, a longtime head coach, and all of this at both the collegiate and high school levels. What I'd like to talk to you about here today is one of our Greyhound blitzes that we call Mirage. Okay, Mirage Trio. I'm going to show it to you versus 11 opposite the halfback. I'm going to show it to you versus 10 on the side of the halfback. So you can learn the rules for both. Okay. Over here are the key terms. And included in that is going to be the versatility of this particular blitz, starting with the name. So key terms, number one, Mirage. Okay. The naming that we give to it, if it starts with an M, that means the mic, which begins with an M, is the dog. The first letter is the dog. So non-subscribers, here's the first T's. You're going to have to push the button. So Mike or inside linebacker, see, there's the versatility as well. They're the dog defender, and Rover, hence R, is the outside linebacker, is the go. Okay? So now I'm going to skip down to the versatility. For game planning purposes or game adjustments, which are more important, okay, we can set it up so the Mike and the Rover execute it no matter what. Because quite frequently, Mike and the Rover travel together on the same side, but not always. Okay? So flexibility in the cases where the uh, Mike and Rover are not on the same side, then the next is it's the Mike and the outside linebacker on the side of the call. All right? It has to be that versatile, and it is. Or for a game adjustment, we might say we thought we wanted to run Mirage. Okay, opposite the back, but they've changed their tendency, so now we just want to call it to the back, so it's the inside and outside linebacker on the side. That's the versatility. So instead of having, you know, umpteen different names, we only have the one name, and we have the versatility to tell our players, hey, call it this way. And that's the bottom line, the ultimate here. The other option is just the inside excuse me, inside-outside linebacker, when ultimately the players learn the rule. Dog is first, go is second, and what that means. Okay, it's an inside linebacker, outside linebacker combo. Okay, now it's harder to get a lot more versatile than that. So now we'll come back up here to the dog defender, Mike or inside linebacker, see? So that's how we teach it when we install it either in the spring or the preseason. It's good versus all schemes. I'll tell you now, I created the Greyhound Blitz family to attack, <clears throat> excuse me, zone read, power read, and RPO because all so many teams have gone to it. But we've also utilized it against two-back power, ISO, counter schemes, inside zone, outside. It's good versus everything. So consequently, the dog has force versus run two, all schemes, which means they also have boat boot, excuse me, versus runner away, specifically quarterback. So when it comes to uh, the power read, when it's coming to them, which I'm going to show you up here, they take the outside portion of it. When it's going away from them, which I'll show you down here, he takes the near threat, okay? Versus zone read, dog has the quarterback. Versus pass, dog has outside cage, running back flare two, non-subscribers. You're going to have to push the button, and I'm not going to say that again, non-subscribers. There's the ultimate teases. Everything else that may not make sense, if you push the button, because it doesn't cost anything, you have access to it all. The go defender, who is rover or outside linebacker? Again, good versus all schemes. So they have spill versus run two, bend versus run away. Boom, done. They have, and you'll see it, inside when it's to them, so you'll see that up here. They have fire threat when it's away from them. You'll see that down here, okay? Dive versus zone reads versus pass in this order. Screen, no screen, draw, no screen, draw, quarterback, okay? And I talked to you already about the versatility. So up top here versus 11 personnel, we have gun, 11 gun Dallas away, which means the halfback's away from the tight end. That's also called an east, okay? 
So we have that. This inside linebacker who is not blitzing is static. Okay. Over here, the inside linebacker is blitzing. So this is 10 gun Detroit East. And now we have to call it East specifically. It's not away because there's no tight end. Okay. The, our players also make what we call even. Right, that affects inside outside linebackers alignment. So there you go, non subscribers. You're welcome. Okay, up top it's a Lucky with a Louie. On the bottom it's a Ringo with a Rogers. So it gets you spinning in both directions, left and right. Okay, I also, again, I'm going to show you blitzing when the power read's going away from them with a zone read. So I can show you that blitzing where the power read's coming to them. But there's not a zone read threat, and I'll explain that briefly up here. So in both the top and the bottom, the quarterback and the halfback will be in green. People involved in the blitz, including the safety. So corners, I'm not going to do anything with them, and I'm not going to talk about the coverage specifically. Trio, I'm going to do in black. Okay? So up top here, right, I have them labeled. Here's Mike, who's your dog. Here's Rover, who's your go. Because the inside linebacker on the side of the halfback is not in the blitz, he makes the static call, okay? So I'm going to talk about the static first for this reason. If they were to run zone read, okay, he reads the mesh. So we have our inside and outside quarterback defenders. We're pretty solid. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily concern me. And once I show you what happens with the blitz on the side away from it, you'll see how it also gets involved, at least on the inside portion, the dive of the zone read. So what I really want to talk to you about is how we blitz opposite the back, how they would defend against the power read coming to them. So first, okay, on the snap indicator, the inside linebacker has to hedge to the edge because he's the dog blitzer. Versus the tight end, he hedges to the heels of his rover and he's – just outside of striking distance. We don't give them anything like you got to be two feet, three feet. Just be far enough outside the rover so you can't touch them, meaning reach out and touch them with your arm. Okay? But the heels are given so he can see the football. He doesn't get caught offside. He doesn't line up offside. The freeze count doesn't affect him. Okay? So then on the snap of the football, okay? Before I get to the blitz, here comes the power read. I'm not drawing up the blocking scheme. So there's the outside portion. There's the inside portion, right? So outside, inside. So first, right, let's talk about the dog, okay? Dog defender. Outside coming to him, power read. So the aiming point slightly different than a usual dog blitz. He comes off the butt of the tight end, but not real tight, just in case there's a reach or something. We can't afford to get him blocked. And then he's up into the backfield. We're calling this in anticipation of a power read, and we react to any other scheme. So that puts him in a collision course position to smack the outside portion of the power read. Okay? The stick, which I didn't cover in the beginning, it's an automatic. All my other presentations, right, it's been a tag. This one, it's a given. It's automatically run. So the end call sign, lucky, it's always the end. There's the stick, right? So he's involved in the inside portion, and if it were a zone read, these two guys are involved as well. So see how solid it is now with the static? So the rover is the go defender. That means his aiming point is he's got a club and rip stepping right off the butt of the tackle. That's the aiming point. Club and rip so you don't get washed down by the tight end. Okay? And so now, right, go defender. He's got the inside when the power read is coming to him. Inside means the quarterback. So there he is, coming down hard. Boom, boom, boom. That's a lot for the quarterback to read. That's a lot of pressure. 
Okay, so now the safety portion of it on the snap of the football screws down. He's reading the surface, but he also is hot on the tight end and the backside safety's rotating middle. That's the safety spin to the blitz. And that is Mirage, okay, opposite the back. So the power read's coming to him. So it's a whole different look. It's pretty cool. Down here, I'm going to show you Mirage versus the zone read because there's a zone read threat now. We're blitzing from the side of the back. And then I'm going to show you Mirage with the power read going away from them, right? So it brings in near threat, far threat. Okay, so now it's going to be quarterback dive. Okay, so same deal here. Boom. He hedges to the edge. Now. His landmark is the heels of his defensive end, and he's outside the striking distance from his defensive end. Okay? He has a definitive landmark here when he's blitzing on the side of the back. It's the near hip of the back. Okay? So there is a definitive landmark. So now the ball snapped. There's the blitz. Okay? Ball snapped. There's the stick. Ball snapped. There's the go, right? Same aiming points. Butt of the tackle, bend. Now watch the power read, right? There's the dive. There's the QB. The go has the dive. That course puts him right on. The dive is also a run away from him, right? So he bends versus run away. We do not put him in conflict. If... The run's away from him, so we're telling him to bend, but we're saying, no, you have quarterback on, right? That puts him in conflict. So see how these things all tie together. It's as important to understand. All right, so he's, the aiming point's there. As he bends inside, he's got to bend slightly to get the quarterback. Okay? Now I'll spin the safeties once and for all. He's reading surface, but he's hot to two. He's spinning middle. Okay? So now let's change the scheme and let's bring it to power read away. Okay, so now it becomes far threat, near threat. So I'm not going to redraw everything here as far as hedging and whatnot. So we'll start with the dog, right? Power reads going away. He's got near threat, which means he's got QB. The go, right? Power reads going away from him. He's got the far threat, which is over here. Now, that being said, if the quarterback were to cross the face of the go, he's going to tackle the quarterback. He's not going to say, oh, ugh, I have far threat. And let no, he'll tackle the quarterback. Assuming that the go does not get there first because he's coming from further away. He's detached. He's going to continue to tackle the far threat. And this is orbit, right? We have all of this, these defenders available to help out with that far threat should he be given the football. Okay? So that is how Mirage works, switching. Now inside linebacker is the dog. Outside linebacker is the go. So as I said at the beginning to my subscribers, I thank you. And to non-subscribers, I hope I teased you just enough to push that button because it doesn't cost you a penny. To YouTube, I thank you. And to everyone, any questions at all, please reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com. It's starting to happen. I'm learning football, which I love. I know I'm helping people on the other side of the screen. So let's help each other out and talk some football.